Good, good afternoon, Gavin here. Uh, we're in sunny Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica, for the Rugby Americas North Tournament Under 19 today. We've got the ladies joining us later in the week, um, but for for now it's been a phenomenal day a little bit of lightning earlier i've got maria thomas with me for, for this next game coming up so um how have you seen this day pan out so far maria it's been an incredible opening to this tournament we've seen great performances from the teams great tenacity especially when we had that unexpected break and that whoo, huge splash of rain that we had as well so the the athletes are really holding it together their technical teams are doing great work to keep them focused on the game Coming up, we have Bermuda and Cayman. Yeah. So how did how did it go early on? Let's re, let's have a quick recap. We had uh, Bermuda played against uh, who earlier on in the in the day? Who was that? Mexico. Bermuda played Mexico, as did Cayman. Okay, they both played against uh, Mexico. Um, Cayman put a big shock on Mexico early in the day, and then uh, a seven-seven draw was it for Bermuda Mexico after that? That is correct, yeah. and Cayman was victorious. It, and so Mexico seeded number one that's not gonna how that's not how it's gonna end up throughout this group by the looks of it it's been an interesting one a few surprises um, on the flip side on the other the other tournament USA uh, the other group USA has been dominant um, over Jamaica and Trinidad Tobago I guess Jamaica Trinidad will be playing after this next game um, to sort of finalize the initial group stages I can hear the the guys getting ready just behind the booth here so they'll be coming out onto the field in, in just a moment um, but in general, it's been a phenomenal day. One of the interesting things about this tournament, and especially today, is most of the athletes here are on their first international game or first international cap. They have not played rugby due to COVID-19, putting a stop to everything for the past two and a half years. Yeah, that's that's massive. I mean, I feel I feel like a couple of the places might have an advantage, like USA South. I know a lot of the guys from Florida, from the local area in Florida, they've been playing all the way through COVID. We had a half season there. So I feel like there's a bit of an advantage for the USA South guys, just because they've just been playing. They've been playing at their normal level, their club and school level. And uh, many of these countries, Trinidad and Tobago, your, your, your home nation, um, included some of those guys, I think they were only let out of their, let out of their house maybe four months ago, was it? Yeah, as far as community rugby in some of these nations, it is, some of these nations don't have community rugby yet, or it's just been reintroduced. So what we are seeing here in this tournament is so important to the development of rugby. So we're really seeing how do development strategies work in a situation where the natural avenues that we have to develop rugby have been cut off. I feel I feel like um, these two teams, Cayman and Bermuda, maybe have a similar situation where they've got small country, they've had some game time um, amongst themselves, sort of isolated, the isolated island kind of situation, and they've been able to play a little bit, and you can actually see that in the way that they're playing. Maybe Cayman more so than Bermuda, but they look very organized. They look like they know each other. They play with cohesion. Both of these teams are predominantly you know locally based players a couple of them have come in from either the UK or Canada because they're studying abroad and they've come back for this but all of them have been a part of the school programs which is common for both of these nations they really push rugby in the schools and they have programs that help to develop the athletes and that's what we're seeing here today this might be the first international match or the first international cap, national cap for these athletes, but many of them have been playing since they were as young as six years old. Yeah, now that's that's great to see. I, I played a little bit of rugby in Bermuda many, many years ago um, in, in my early 20s, and at that point it was all very adult rugby and there wasn't much youth system going on, but that seems to have changed, which I am absolutely stoked about because that's why that's now means that we can get these competitions going on a regular basis. And there's not just these six teams here, there's, there's other countries that and maybe just starting a little bit further behind and, and they're developing places like Haiti even are starting to put together their national team Dominican Republic which I think the women are representing the Dominican Republic this weekend places like that they're beginning to get, build up that uh, uh, that background of, of youth rugby so that they can have some kids coming through and a nice filtered system so we're also seeing team. where where community play is allowed that the clubs and communities have really been supporting the under 19 teams for example in Cayman Friday nights are dedicated to have been dedicated to developing this team for this tournament with their four local clubs the senior members okay, so they're going out they're going about it with a purpose that's excellent excellent stuff so we've got uh, just so you guys know you got uh, Cayman on the left hand side of your screen in white the Cayman Islands on the right hand side of your screen in blue and pink you've got the Bermuda Islands 
great competition. Two two similar sized islands, similar population. So this this might be a tight one. And they both played well against uh, Mexico earlier in, in the day. So we'll see how it goes. I'm ready for this one. How about you, Maria? Absolutely. I'm excited to see this game kick off. We've got Rahim from Jamaica, is a referee in the center, and he is assisted in this game by Staggy and Kanisha, both Captain. referees out of Trinidad and Tobago. Two Captain. Why, Captain? Fantastic. Great to see Kanisha out there. This is, is this her first game? Is this, her? this is her debut tournament. Nice. International tournament. Phenomenal stuff. Developing in all areas. Love it. So, Cayman kicks off to Bermuda. <laughs> Slips there. That looks like a high tackle. tackle. There. Little accidental, but high tackle is a high tackle. Bermuda get the ball. They're looking to work with their forwards from the from the start. Perry's forward well taken. Get up, halfway get up. line to ground. Get. Bermuda trying to now work it wide, working with their backs. Great I stiff arm, but a secondary tackler coming in there. Phenomenal work. There's a bit of space on the outside here. He dropped the ball. He was just just at the vital moment. Lets it drop. So that will come back into Bermuda territory. We had a downpour of rain earlier today, so the athletes are still dealing with a lot of water on the pitch, so I'm sure that ball is hard to hold on to right now. Yeah, it's torrential. I'm not sure what game it was now. Was it? Uh, it might have been came in, was it came in Mexico or Bermuda, Mexico, I think, is when the rain came down earlier. Blue Harvard. An interesting game that was. If you, and you can go back and watch these games that were on earlier in the day. They're they're uploaded to YouTube, I believe, on uh, on Sports Max app yes, as well. And you'll be able to catch up with all the games if you missed them earlier. And that's throughout this week. We will be live streaming all the games this this week and uh, going into Sunday where the finals. Where you can catch up with all of them as they are uh, recorded and added to YouTube. Later. That's right. We are here at the Yui Mona Bowl. Wonderful to be hosted here. Great hospitality, of course, from Jamaica, the host nation for this tournament. And really a paramount tournament as far as looking at the development of rugby coming out of the pandemic. Absolutely. Now, we'll see how these guys go. Nice set piece play to get them moving out wide. Cayman defense comes up, no yardage gain. They're, they're really working with their uh, their fly half out wide there, Kwame Naylor. It looks lively. It looks like it could be a handful if it gets ball in hand often enough. Big counter rook and then a tackle. All right, find a button to them in the trash. Don't litter them, okay? So we've been seeing the development of these teams even between the first to second half of the game. Remember, these athletes have not had international competition for a very long time, so they're finding their feet on the pitch, and we expect to see the talent and the excitement build throughout this tournament. Yeah, the, the um, as it sort of defines down, there's been a, a couple of games that have been maybe a bit lopsided, but as the week develops, those scores will become a little bit tighter as the group okay. stages finish, and then we go into sort of the uh, the knockout stages. That's usually the case, and uh, hopefully we have a phenomenal week of rugby and everyone enjoys themselves. Uh, I know the uh, the Cayman boys there enjoyed their first game of the tournament earlier on. And I think they shocked a few people. Mexico were the number one seeded uh, team in this tournament, and uh, they upset everybody there. That's good, that's good. Allowing Cayman to play on there. Loose play. Trying to keep the ball alive. Bermuda harassing them, pushing them all the way back to almost the 22. They may have stolen the ball as well. Yes, they have. Bermuda's ball. The inside centre takes it, releases his winger. And surely nobody's going to catch him from there. Excellent, excellent work. Noah Bartolo going over towards the sticks. Bermuda opening the scoring to make it 5-0. Came and not overly happy with that uh, result of that one. Please, language, everyone. And goes the, goes the extra half yard to get to dot that ball down. Trying to help out his kicker. Henry Yes, so for those of you watching at home, people new to rugby, scoring the ball between the post on the H puts your kicker in a better position to convert the try, which is five points for an extra two points. So it'll be Naylor, Naylor to kick the fly half. 
makes that look very easy very direct doesn't get much height on it just nails it between the sticks so nail it adds the two that makes it seven zero to bermuda and a nice little try i don't know if you can see the height the um, the repeat of that it's good work by the uh, by the inside center to release the hook. so prior to this tournament Rugby America's North has been focusing on training and education and has had a number of classes, sessions, and workshops to develop the capacity of medics, referees, and officials um, throughout the Caribbean. Get on, Rip Bermuda! Came and kicking off again. Bobbles, but they've managed to, to clean it up. Bermuda carrying the ball into contact. These international competitions are a great opportunity Marcel, Marcel! and it's often and the unsung heroes sometimes of matches are the officials and the capacity and building that gives the players a better experience and helps the players to become better athletes as well so it's a really holistic approach. Absolutely, yeah. If you can increase the standard of refereeing, quite often that passes down to the players because they're educating them, even though it may be subconsciously on the field while they're explaining, hey, you did this wrong, this is the penalty you're getting. It's a great way for them to develop, not just with their coaches, but getting that information from referees is always very, very useful. Four lads. Box here, yeah. We've got Freddie, Freddie Robson throwing in for this line -out. Yeah, yeah. Came stepping into the line out. Little too high for him. Bermuda ended up coming away with that one. Got ha came and got hands on the ball there. Yep. Bermuda just need to roll around, roll a half body around for him to get away from that. Huh? Sometimes just that extra half roll will get you will get you some space to wait for the cavalry to arrive and clean out the, the attempted rug. It looks like they're going to kick for the corner. They, they're backing themselves on the line out, which makes sense now because earlier in the day with such a wind you really couldn't get any success with it. But uh, at this time it's become very muggy. There's there's no breeze whatsoever right now, so this is maybe the opportunity to use that line if you feel comfortable with it. Yeah, speaking with the coaches, uh, Coach Weston and Cayman is also coached by Coach Bulls. They're definitely focusing on their structure, patience, and they want to stay tight in this game. So what they're doing is really having an awareness of the environment. And as that changes, they're adjusting their strategies to make yeah. sure that they can yeah. capitalize on the skills that they have, understanding that the, the field is wet and that can affect their play. Yeah, a lot of lads coming from away from from Cayman. Uh, the, maybe they're Cayman Islanders, but they they go away to boarding school in the UK. Even I remember there was one lad last time around from all the way from Australia. So ball three, ball three. Okay, have a there's a, a very diverse group in amongst the island. No, hands, no, hands, no, hands. Hey, hey, hey. Absolutely, this under 19 is the pinnacle of development in the Cayman Islands. They have about 3,500. Oh, and we've got a, we've got a breakaway. We've got a breakaway here. That's the, the number 15, Augustus phase on. Augustus just picked up a loose ball. And he's going to dot it down under the sticks. I don't think that was uh, with the, the, the flow of play. But he's taken advantage of it. Just a loose ball. And he's picked it up and gone the length of the field. A good, good 70 or 80 metres at least. Bermuda's head coach. Coach Naylor was mentioning that they're looking forward to getting more time on the pitch and watching as the team gets comfortable in their shoes and can really start executing some of those plays, but also, as you said, capitalizing on opportunities as they arise. Absolutely. Mm, that's uh, face on Augustus scoring that one. He's the captain of the team. Water, water, water. Water, water. Yeah. Are they allowed to take yeah. water on? Okay. On. Okay. Oi. Hi. Time on. Yep. Another good kick from Bermuda. 
Tamos! What do you recommend? What's your, what do you recommend? Yeah? Hey, he doesn't play around too much, the kicker. He, he's very yeah. direct. He doesn't get any height to it. He knows where exactly where it's going. I'm going to suspect that he's maybe a bit of a football player. Seven blue! Very confident in his kicking. Just drives it straight where he wants it. Seven blue! One of the things we've been Seven noticing in this blue. tournament is the communication between the officials. And it's interesting to note that many of these officials who are refereeing are either coming from a background of playing, a background of coaching, or they may be doing all three at the same time. <laughs> Wearing many hats is very common in this part of the world for rugby. Um, and those are the people that are most passionate. Sometimes you've got to offload the work a bit, but um, in the meantime, if they're willing to do it, it's great to see. We've got Byron for, uh, for Cayman kicking off now. 14-0 currently to Bermuda. Bermuda getting a bit of a stranglehold on this game, although kind of against the, the, the flow of play a little bit. But just gone 10, so that's good to go. Bermuda just needs to keep some possession now. Their fly half plays well, but he doesn't get much time with ball in hand, unfortunately. He's at the bottom of Rook right now. Forwards isolated. No hands, no hands, no hands. Managed to get it out. Looping pass. The Cayman defence coming up strong, putting under pressure. Somehow he got loose from that. No hands, no hands, Cayman's got. He had his hands on that early, but the ref didn't like it. Get out, get out, Mike! Bermuda managing twice to control that ball at the rook. So you're seeing as the tournament progresses that the ball is being released sooner when it's on the ground, releasing the players, making sure that they're taking into consideration the comments that they're getting from the referees and playing good, clean rugby. Yeah, they're beginning to listen to the ref, that's great. Augustus making some good yards again, captain leading from the front. Going route one, Cayman Islands, hooker. No, 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 now we're working around the outside. Is there a little bit of space? It's 4v1 right now. But that goes to ground. That's not going to help them. And Bermuda going to recover defensively. Looks a little slippery out there underfoot. There's a lot of bodies sliding when they try to change direction. White ball scrum. All the way back over the far side. Another point that was made is that there are 13 different high schools represented on Cayman Islands team and it's across the whole island so they've really done a good job of reaching the entire nation with the rugby program through school. That's awesome. Yeah, with it being a smaller island, there's a lot, there's a lot of schools there that are involved. That's huge. That yes. really makes it part of the community. Schools and community rugby. So it's about 3,500 through schools and another 300 members in community rugby. Not bad for such a little place. Not sure what the population is there, but I remember we had a tournament there a couple of years ago, and it was it was a three-minute drive from the hotel to the to the stadium, and we were on the beach. So yeah, <laughs> halfway across the country <laughs> to get there. Great recovery after practice and games to hit some salt water. Exactly, it was a beautiful thing. Set! Yes, yes. Stay, stay. Ball's good! So just informed that uh, the flanker for Bermuda number seven, Dill, got a, a head knock. He's been taken out for a HIA. Just to check that he's okay. Blue ball! Hopefully he'll be back shortly, if uh, nothing dramatic. But there's always there's always the precaution if we're any any doubt, take them out is the line they use. Plenty of guys sitting on the bench that can take his place. No need to keep a kid in if he's got a bad head. One of the tools that the teams have been using is with this amazing coverage from Sportsmax, they are actually able to go back and review their games in between during their their rest time and recovery time. And they're able to analyze how they've been playing and then come back out and make whatever adjustments are necessary. Fix a few things if they're making mistakes, replace a player that's not doing their job properly, that kind of thing. That's awesome. Time off! I was taking it to the next level. I remember a few years ago when I started commentating with Rugby America's North, it was me in a, in a chair on a sideline and a cameraman stood on top of a car somewhere. That was about it. It's uh, very different nowadays. It's making me feel very old. Back in the days, back when my first cap, national cap, 
that might I might have actually met you there. It's probably about seven or eight years ago. That is when we met. Okay, oh everything good to your side? That's one of the great things about rugby, okay. the community and the camaraderie, watching, you know, your peers grow, <coughs> helping grow the sport, Time develop it with again. the youth that we're seeing here today in this tournament under 19s we are also going to be seeing the women who will be playing 12s for the first time along their pathway to return to 15s i like that putting putting the the women's national team slightly out of their comfort zone and pushing them to get more you know a bigger number obviously i think the final objective would be to get them doing 15 aside it's not that easy to turn up with 24 25 players i'm sure of many of these smaller countries but 12s, just pushing them a little bit up from 10s, that's great, sure. love it. There's a big sure. difference between the 7s and 15s format of the game, as has been commented on Five. for some of these teams. A lot of Six. these youth have been able to experience 7s, yes, and many of them are transitioning into the 15s, depending on the programs that are available for them in their home nations. But it does make for the, the 15s game to be more entertaining when you've got a bunch of 7s players playing. But they just play much freer. Which, these are, it, it, look at this one again, he was almost away there. He's very lively, this, um, is it Ryan, Ryan Daniel, or is, is that Bartello? Bartello, really lively on this near side, he scored the try earlier, if he was away, if he'd have uh, carried on there, he'd scored no doubt, he sidestepped two or three players very easily. It's great to see a lot of the quick play, and you can see some of those sevens tactics are translating really, really well into this format of the game. Absolutely, these, these guys that play on the wing and fullback for these 15 aside games, you can tell that they, they must have a field day in the sevens to them. So that ball is put in there by Cayman Islands. Hold on. Ooh, squirted out the back, the eight-man picked it up. Massive, massive guy, Freddie Robson. Really big eight-man. Did he release the ball on that? The scrum has gone on his own. Looks very comfortable. Liam Sinclair just running away with it. Taking Bermuda forward. And that's come a loose ball. Everyone's playing football now. And we're seeing how the pressure builds as soon as you get close to that try line. I don't know if the referee agrees with Bermuda on that one. But yeah, got a little bit loose, everyone just started hacking at it. Got to drop on that ball, control it, recycle, start again. David Cole at the end might have had a shout at the at claiming that try, but uh, maybe a couple of knock-ons prior to it. I'm sure we'll get a decision in a moment. Time up, five. Time's Not back on and we turn with a scrum following a knock on. Okay, but you're gonna quick make a quick substitution. Blue ball, knock forward by white. David Cole looking very very upset with himself. So we're seeing that both of these teams are, are very strong in the scrum. For under 19s, they cannot drive the scrum further than one meter. That is a specific rule for under 19s rugby for player welfare. So you'll see that they'll try and get a quick hook and get that ball back as, as quickly as they can. Gentlemen, this is for the cadence, yeah? You've really got to have a very experienced yeah. hooker in that one sort of in, position. Had one in. If you can't be, if you're not allowed to push so at far, the then, then yeah. stealing stealing at the hook is the only okay. other thing you Thank can you. do, really. Huh? All right. So they've had some advice there from the referee. Go. Bind. Set. Yeah, let's have it. So Sinclair with the put in. They're in a great position here. Split attack as well. Hold up, boys. They're going to go to the top side. He bobbled that. The referee was right there. He saw it. Knocked on. Knocked on. Sinclair just couldn't get it from all of those feet at the back of the scrum. Here. Here. A little look of frustration from the Vibuna coach. Really impressed with the production today from Sports Max. Uh, if you're watching this, please feel free to share it on your social media, guys. Uh, share the, the wonders of rugby with your friends and family that, uh, that follow you on your social media. That's right, you can watch online, you can watch at Sports Max, Sports Max 2 on their app and all of their affiliated channels. 
Stay, stay nine, stay nine. Ball three. Okay, he's going to come away with that. Looking for the kick, but it doesn't get too far. I don't even think it went out, out the 22. He was feeling the pressure from the Bermuda defense. If you are here in Jamaica, then we would love to see you in person at the UE Mona Bowl. Come on through. There is no admission charge. We've got seats. Every everything is ready for you. Uh, there's a little canteen. You can get some refreshments or you can bring your own. Come out and support the Jamaica national team and support the other teams who are here in this tournament this week. We've got Bermuda for this line out. Hey. Number two, Pete Tomposh throwing it in. Goes a little bit loose. That goes Cayman's way. Scrum half Brandon Sangster gets control of it. Get out, Blue! Blue, get out! 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 Blue, get you're seeing that Cayman Islands is working to pull something out of their sleeves as we approach the halftime. So it's really scrappy in there. There's a lot of really good battle at the back of the at the back of the rook. A few fisty cuffs in amongst it, but a great kick, clearing kick from the Cayman fullback. Are they going to run it all the way back? They're going to try. He's got support with him. He's spilt it forward right at the halfway line. So now it's going to be Cayman. There's a lot of loose play available here. The space is all over the spot. Can Cayman settle it a little bit? Yes, they can. Now Cayman have got the numbers on that top side. And the ball squirts out one more time. Goes back to Bermuda. It's hard to keep a track of this, guys. Fast paced. Loose ball everywhere. Greasy. And there's that eight man from Bermuda again. Once he gets some movement, Freddie Robson, he looks really solid going forward. And again, Bermuda looking this time to go out wide. That's back, that's good. There is no ball retention whatsoever here. It's just wild. Everyone's really trying to get into this game. Early engagement, coming around the scrum, yeah? Coming around the rock. Coming around the rock. Pete Komposh pleading his case to the referee but right now it's going to be Bermuda's ball are they going to tap and play yeah they want ball in hand they're not going to give it back to Cayman for free you're going to have to come and take it from us and he's got himself over the over the halfway line it's the uh, David Madison from Bermuda working really well. No hands right. And Bermuda look like they've got a bit of rhythm playing now. Yes, go, go. The space, another one. This is where the first try came from. Can they release him again? Nope, this time he manages to hold on to the ball. But again, that they're very dangerous down this near side, that combination of Bermuda 12 and 11. Rangy Nathaniel Scotland from Bermuda taking it forward now, coming off the bench. Little pick and go around the outside. Cayman okay, struggling to contain this Bermuda team. Once they get moving, they're very difficult to deal with. They go for a quick tap and go. Alexander Fox. Sorry, that's uh, Pete Compost at it. Taking them forward. It's a lot of loose ball. There's that. There's that eight man going again. Did he get over the line? There's an arm in the air, but it's not the referees. Penalty. No hands white, white, white. Time off. to go quickly. Enough of you and your words. Oh, and that's a shame. Alexander Fox, the captain for Cayman Islands, gets his marching orders. Just a yellow, but I don't know if he'll be able to play much else in this half. Just too much chat. Too much chat from um, Alexander Fox of the Cayman Islands team. With the referee, got fed up of listening.
So with that, Bermuda get another opportunity to take three more points. Nailer nails it again. And there you go for the half, guys. Bermuda really taking the game by the scruff of the neck. 17 0 over the Cayman Islands currently. Dominant performance so far after a, uh, a draw earlier in the in the day against Mexico. At the end of this, I'm not sure who would be the uh, the outright leaders in this group. It's going to be tight because of the the unusual way that it's panned out so far. But 17-0 at the half. We're going to be back in just a few seconds after some commercials.
Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us, we're about to, uh, a couple of minutes we're going to get the second second half of this game underway, Cayman Islands against the Bermuda, um, both of these teams played really well earlier against Mexico, um, but Bermuda running away with this one so far today, some dominant uh, performance from a few of the guys, Pete Compost playing really well for Bermuda, uh, along with uh, a couple of their other guys, Noah Bartello, for me getting released here by Ryan Daniel down the left side, down this near side, scoring their first try. Got it as far across as he could to make life a little bit easier for this gent. Naylor, been pretty good with the boot today in general. This was a beaut from uh, this one was Augustus, the captain, running away with it off that loose ball. And he managed to dot it down under the sticks as well with all kinds of enthusiasm. He's pretty amped, been leading the boys from the front in this game. Played well earlier as well against uh, Mexico in their 7-7 draw earlier in the day. Unfortunately, the, um, the captain of the Cayman Islands team got himself a yellow card. Just talking too much to the referee as the captain and he maybe took it a little too far. All a learning process, but that, that gives Neil another opportunity to dink one over. And uh, really dominant so far, Bermuda, in this first half. We've got a toss down to the field side for Maria Thomas, who's got a couple of interviews for us. Cameron Sinclair, thank you so much for making the time to talk to us. I know it's your halftime. What are you guys going to focus on going into the second half? Well, I reckon after that first half, we really need to focus on fixing our mistakes. We've had a shocking first half, really. Um, we just don't really look like we're early in the game. Now, um, you were the youngest player in 2019. What do you have to say about getting this type of international experience and exposure when you're young? Oh, it's brilliant because living on a small island, you don't really get to play any games. Probably one tournament a year. This is it for the boys as well who are playing today. Um, it really just helps. Coach Cupidor, you've been working with Bermuda. Yes. I know that you've discussed with your technical team the focus coming out into the game. How do you feel about their performance in this first half? Um, so far, we've, we've been sticking to the game plan, so I'm really happy with the boys. I think we had a tendency in our earlier game to play like they play, and that's not our style. Our style is to get the ball out wide and not close contact. So if we stick to our game plan, I feel pretty, pretty confident that we can win this game. Now, I know you had a long break in the last game due to the lightning. How are the athletes managing with the changes in weather, et cetera, et cetera? Um, luckily, my boys are pretty versatile. Um, we were in the gym, and they were throwing the ball around and doing push-ups and just having fun. I mean, we haven't played rugby since because of COVID and the rest of it for about two years, so they're just happy to be here, happy to be playing rugby, and happy to be together. So we're just having fun, and this tournament is awesome. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're just going to get the second half underway for this uh, game, Bermuda about to kick off on your left hand side, that's the, the fly half with ball in hand, Kwame Naylor, he will get us underway in just a, a moment or two, they are dominant so far in this game, by the way Maria Thomas is with me, phenomenal interviews on the sideline, I really appreciate you doing all of the, uh, the Stairmaster back here up and down to do those interviews for us, it's phenomenal, good stuff. It's a pleasure. I love getting the insight to all the work that the teams have been doing, finding out about their development strategies. 
we spoke in the break with Cameron Sinclair and he was the youngest player, as we said, in 2019. And so we're really seeing how he's able to contribute to his team in that capacity with his experience. Now, phenomenal. Yeah, I do remember him as well back then. Uh, he's grown a fair bit since then. He must have been about 16 at the time, I guess. 15. Was he 15? Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's a big boy now. Oh, almost coming through and stealing that ball. Big, big Simmons, one of the front row forwards from Bermuda, almost got away with it as well. So came and now got that ball in their own half. Tom Byron. Watch your words. He's looking to go out wide with that one as he managed to get it over it's gone into the 22 and rolled out not bad not a bad kick at all phenomenal phenomenal work definitely making the ball do the running there absolutely really good kick he was inside his own 40 as well we're seeing the stand starting to fill up here again we are at the ue mona bowl so if you are in jamaica if you are in kingston find your way down here we still have a couple of games left today and we will be here through to sunday bringing you rugby under 19 men and women's 12s some of the jamaica women's national team there coming out to support the uh the other teams coming around I'm sure many of these ladies are uh, residents of the local area they should be what playing thursday and friday no it's great because actually most of the teams are actually staying in the accommodations, the halls at Yui Mona. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect venue because go, the go, teams are go, so close go. to the pitch. It's easy for them to get to training. It's easy for them to get to the matches. In the case that there's anything that is held up, they have a place to stay that's comfortable. Perfect. Came and making some yards down here on this near side. Um, Shemuel Scott has done some some great work through the middle. Now they've gone to the top side. Going to try and make their way back this way. Jaden Thompson carrying the ball. Liam Robson playing well at, uh, at scrum half. Scoops up the ball there. Bermuda is working to push Cayman back, but they definitely don't want to lose any ground. See them setting up the plays here and communicating. Yeah, managing it quite well considering Clancy Hannon there stepping out scrum half from the normally playing at the full back position, but we've got Bermuda stolen the ball here just outside their 22. Great work from them. Puts them in a much better position. Now they can start carrying. Working this time around the back. There's a lot of space out here wide if they can make this work. He's got that release again. This is Augustus. He's got some wheels on him. He's stepped one, stepped another. He's got a little ways to go. He's plenty chasing, but he's going to do it all on his own. Phenomenal. That might be his third try of the game. Second at least. And a nice hug at the end of it. Great try from Bermuda's captain. That's uh, Faison Augustus. He had a lot of work to do here, but fends one, steps inside. He had a lot of work here, it was people chasing him, but he ran and ra outran all of them and manages to dot it down. A little bit late, but he was happy with that. Phenomenal you, try. You can see where he checks his peripheral vision and then he just backs himself and all the way to the H. Yeah. Play, played with a lot of confidence uh, this entire game so far. He's uh, really leading from the front, even though he's playing from the back. So Naylor, this is an easy one for him. He's been doing really well today with his kicks. Knocks another one over. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. Kicking really confidently. So you can see the advantage of touching the ball down between the posts in that H. It really makes it easier for the kicker and those extra two points. there Naylor. Mr. Westin, one of the coaches for the Cayman Islands from the Westin dynasty. I think there's five brothers and, a, and five brothers and sisters and the, and the father all played for the national team at one point or other. Come here. I see Chase boys. Oh, 
Bermuda to receive the ball. Nice little fend. And the second one. And the third. He shrugged off three of them. The captain will not give up, but he cannot bring them down. Try Bermuda number five. Phenomenal. Silas Young dotting it over. Three massive stiff arms and then just outrunning the chase. Bermuda dominant. They they look like a different team that played against Mexico earlier in the day. Really pulled it all together. That's the replay there. You can see the support from the Bermuda teammates. Coach Clap in here. I, re I honestly thought this one was going to be a close one because both of these teams played well against Mexico but Bermuda have taken it to a ne the next level. I think this is a tournament where we're going to see a lot of upsets, a lot of development, a lot of growth. It's great that it's happening over a few days. Naylor missed that one. A little bit of a difficult angle off his right foot but... Um, Really, really impressed with these, uh, this Bermuda team in this second game. I mean, to develop so quickly in such a, a short period of time from the first game to the second team, the second game, it's not something you see every day. Kudos to the uh, to the team management. Definitely seeing the work that's being put in in regards to fitness, especially changing out from sevens. It's 40 minute games that the under 19s are playing and we're seeing improvement as the day goes on so that really shows they've done the conditioning that's necessary to get them through these matches yeah Bermuda look a little bit stronger on their feet at this stage there's a few, a few bodies that look a little worn on the Cayman team right now body language is speaking volumes time off Time on. Scrum. Ball's not time. So we have a scrum to Cayman Islands. 14 white. To me. To me. To me. So quick substitution. Switching out the wingers. 14 out and 22 in for Cayman Islands. That's Judah Hart. Get on his, get on the field. We may have a blood bin from someone in the pack as well. Second row, well, second row forward, Jonathan Robson. Going to take him out, and that looks like a blood replacement for Luke McFarlane making his uh, debut. After the rain, if if you've got a white kit, you can always tell who's been on the pitch. <laughs> One more substitution, and that's going to be Cullen Crump. Lynch. Bye. If you're just joining us, we are at the UE Mona Bowl. If you're in Kingston, Jamaica, you are welcome to join us if you are close by. If you're joining us online or seeing us on television, you can catch us live on Sportsmax, Sportsmax 2, Scene, and any other affiliated channels with Sportsmax. And the app is also carried on. You can watch us on your phone. And you can follow us live online. If none of that works, YouTube is uh, also, everything is stored there as well, even afterwards. So using all the platforms that we can to get rugby out there to the world. Get out blue, get out blue! Okay, captain. Ale Alexander Fox back on the field, trying to make an impact. Going for the chip over, but it doesn't go too far. Not, not much of an advantage there for Cayman. Trying to get inventive, Let's keeping it alive. Back, please. She's going to bring it all the way back to this near side. Bermuda making another switch. Devon Soto coming in. Ready. Ready. Ah. 
good kick, puts them in a nice position there. Cayman can do something with this if they can figure out their lineup. Blood substitution back in. Number four, Jonathan Robson. Second row forward, likely jumping here. How much? How much? How much? Four, 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 four. Yes, sir. Cayman Islands throwing in this ball. No, they're just not getting him off the ground. So Bermuda are going to come away with that. Lost their uh, opportunity there, Cayman Islands. Good support arriving from Bermuda. There's acres of space out to the top side there. Can they take advantage of it? The wing is kind of on his own there, but he's done well. He's done well to track down the outside center and the wing. And forced an error. There by Blue. We'll have a scrum. Great work on that top side by the defending winger. White ball. Yes, sir. We've got another line out here. This is an interesting set piece. Is it a line out there or is it a scrum? No, they're going to go with the scrum over oh, there. Oh, they're going with the scrum. Ethan and Clendon walking on the field right now. Another substitution. Really getting the opportunity for, for these guys as much as possible in the build-up of this competition. Crouch. It's vital to just get time on the field, if nothing else. Yeah, and they're getting a lot of practice set. with these set plays. This is yes, so sir. important to the development of the sport. Yeah, it's so much different when you're running at actual ball players three, rather than fresh three. air. Good yards now from Cayman. A little bit more energy. Working in pods now. Support slow to arrive from Cayman. I think that's maybe why they're losing a little bit of ball occasionally. Another loose ball from Cayman, and it's going to be a scrum. Both of these teams will want to be getting the ball into some open play. Bermuda have been dominant. It's 29 0 currently. I can't see Cayman coming back into this at the moment. They have, they've lost a, a little bit of cohesion to try to give so, some of the uh, younger guys a run out and sort of emptied the bench a bit. And uh, that takes it even worse co in terms of cohesion. Medic! Sir? Right, so they're calling for a medic now. Is he out? Which number does your ball? Two. All the medics in the tournament are level 2 ICIR immediate care in rugby certified. Here's the mark, here's the mark. Player welfare is one of the major focuses of this tournament as is demonstrated by the amount of training and education that preceded the tournament. Developing the capacity within each of the unions is important for developing the sport within the union, on the island, and then of course for contributing to the international tournaments when they come up and having representation, not only on the field with the players, but also through things like commentary, Gavin, um, Thank you. the officials, the medics, the there are a lot again. of opportunities within rugby for people to get involved and stay involved. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, even down to the event planning, just organizing the, you know, making the structure so that you can put the cameras up. There's a, there's a million Rush. different pieces uh, to, to make this happen. It's not just uh, players on a field Set. and a referee. It's so much more, especially when you take the competition seriously and no more, official no rules and there's the right people. They've even got people helping the referees to, to assess them after games, things like that. It's a phenomenal way of doing it. Love it. Great catch there by Cayman Islands. Brought down in the tackle. That was a lot of running came and had to do to get back on onto the side where they could get the ball and go forward again. Making life difficult for themselves by these little mistakes. And there's another one as we speak. It's going to pull it all the way back over to this side. And that will actually go the way of... Nope. Change his mind. Bermuda. Blue. 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 Yes. 
<laughs> Neil is asking for the kick. It's a fair distance, almost 40, but he looked very confident going into that. She just wants to run the clock down. No more injuries are needed from for them. Kick over three more points, they'll get the ball back anyway. Five minutes. Oh, and that one's shot a little bit too relaxed, a little bit too confident maybe. So Cayman have got ball, they're on, on their own five, couple of little jinx there, working well. The number 10 for Cayman, Tom Byrne. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So you're hearing the instruction there from the referee, that is Rahim from Jamaica. He is a referee, he also is, is a coach and a player. I spoke to him before the game and he was letting me know that they're looking to do a lot of development within Jamaica and refereeing is one of those areas where they're looking for people Five. to come out and join Seven. into the rugby community. Yeah, I mean, if you've got good referees and then the, the games flow, if the game's flowing, the kids enjoy it, if the kids enjoy it, then they come back and they play more. Well, it's so nat natural, so Six if you've got, you've got those guys that know what they're doing, then it makes life so much easier. And just, you know, as, a, as someone that's maybe recruiting and trying to build teams, your life's, life's so much better when you can just turn up and there's, you know, 23, 30 kids there playing seven, to select the team. And most of the time it's a non-contact role. Nah, it's perfect. You can't, don't have to get beaten up either. Even better. White seven. Okay. Thank you. We're just dropping the hint, ladies and gentlemen, that we need more referees. Let's go. Let's see. <laughs> Let's go. Crouch. Bye. So this is a Bermuda scrum Set. in a great position. Yes. A new set piece for them. Naylor. Working out and he dinks through. Augustus is chasing that one. Good work. Dots it down behind his own line. Under pressure there. There's Robert Ayers being intelligent. Drop, dot, dotted it down behind his own line. He could feel Augustus breathing down the, the back of his neck. They've tapped the ball and gone quickly there. That's Tom Byrne again, playing smart. Now they're going to try and work across. Steps inside. The support's there. Came and are going to try and throw a few things at them. Maybe the kitchen sink. Captain Fox leading by example. Now they're working it wide. They've got numbers out here. If they can keep it alive. There's a little bit of space. If you can step back in there, he's good. Ball's still good. They're still alive. Another big counter up by Augustus. Took three of them to put him down there at that rope. Came and managed to run themselves out of their own uh, try line there. Phenomenal work. Great line speed. Bermuda putting pressure on them still. Let's bring it back. Offside by Blue. Offside Bermuda in that previous phase. So Cayman will get that ball. Back to the drawing board for Coach Weston of the Cayman Islands. He wants a piece of that action, doesn't he? Still got plenty of running him in the, the front row forward from the Cayman Islands, leading his team again by example. Now they're working in a pod. Cayman Islands are doing well here. They've decided to turn up for this game. Another crash ball supports there. Nice now. Now they've got this timing right on the support. Lost the ball though. Bermuda come away with it. Big hit coming in on this near side. You need to clip a highlight for that one. The number eight from the Cayman Islands, Freddie Robson, laying in a massive hit. Bermuda will feel that all the way at home in Bermuda. That was a big one. Okay, 
There's a lot of tired bodies out there right now. It's been a long day. All these, both of these teams have played twice today. This is the, towards the end of their second game. So they will need to go get in the uh, ice bath after this game, I think, and uh, be ready again. Naylor wants to go quickly. Referee says no. Naylor's been lively the whole game, kicking well, distributing well, looks like a very composed young player. Bermuda with a with a new scrum half in there, Devon, Devon Augustus, the younger brother I'm presuming, of, of Faison Augustus. Some fresh legs on there. All of that hard work that came got themselves into the position, they really need to put some pressure on defensively if they're going to get any reward from that work. And there he is, the man I was just talking about, Naylor, carving it up right now. And he goes again, he's going again quickly, he's attacking them. He's made 40 yards in the last two phases, the lad. Finally gives it. And they're going, Augustus, one stiff arm, skips a second, offloads the ball. He's only got one man to beat. Great tackle. Came and over on this near side, Robert Ayers again, defensively doing the work. And that will end that game. Try saver at the end there, but phenomenal work from Bermuda. Looked really good the, the last few minutes there. Naylor, special. Going to keep an eye on him for the rest of this week. Had a great game. He was quiet the first game. Got his kicks, but uh, really impressive this time around. Dominant performance from Bermuda. They'll take the win from this one. Cayman Island need to go back to the drawing board after a great game earlier in the in the day against Mexico. So we shall uh, we'll see where this lot ends up. We'll have to have a look in the we'll have to have a look at the pools and see who's seeded first, second, third. 29-0. We're going to get uh, through some of these highlights and let's have a quick review of this game. It was phenomenal. Big hits early in this game. The, combi the combination of the uh, the outside centre and wing early in this game was great for Bermuda. Naylor, like I said, he was good till the good till the last drop was Naylor this uh, this game. Started well. This was a captain Augustus. He did some phenomenal phenomenal work throughout throughout the game. Faze and Augustus getting an early, earlier try. Naylor, nailing another one. It's the Cayman captain Alexander Fox unfortunately got himself a card. Naylor fired another one over for his uh, injustices. This was Augustus doing what he does. Fended one, stepped another, just outran everybody else. No one even close. Naylor keeps popping them over, and this was great, three stiff arms in a row. A beast, number five, Silas Young, gets himself a try as well. At that point, I think Cayman just physically, they'd run out of steam. And we're going to be back shortly after these interviews. I'm going to toss it down to Maria on the sideline. Edward. Oh, good thing this is pre-recorded. Which Weston? My apologies. a little bit too much um, so we just need to keep that composure and but it's a good learning experience for the guys and another day tomorrow new day tomorrow and we'll be coming hard we definitely saw a lot of heart out there and we wish you all the best in the remainder of the tournament thank you yeah all right coach Naylor 
We How discussed the focus that you wanted your athletes to maintain throughout the games today. Do you feel they've achieved that? Definitely. I mean, the, um, undoubtedly, our, our performance in our second game was so much better than the first one. And, you know, I put it down to nerves and just that rustiness of not having played for so long. Um, and, I, you know, we're really pleased with how that game went.